In the last lecture, we set up our core data manager. And we also created our green garden model that contained one particular entity called vegetable. And the main reason was that so that we can save our vegetables that are coming from an API into the database. Why are we saving this into the database? Well, for first thing, if we can save it into the database, it can be available for offline support. That's the first reason. And the second reason, if we can save it into a database, we can easily use it to create our own My Garden, meaning instead of saving it in Firebase or some API, we can simply create more tables and save that information inside the table, which will represent not only all the different vegetables, but also our selected vegetables that we are trying to plant in our garden. But the first thing we need to do is to get the data into our SQLite database using core data. And that is what we're going to do in this lecture. We already implemented the core data manager. The core data manager contains functions that are used to set up the core data for our application. It consists of the save function also, which will save the view context. But it doesn't really have any function to import the data from a web service. So that is exactly what we are going to implement, the import function. I'm simply going to go ahead and say import data. This is going to be an async function, which we can throw an exception. The main idea behind the import data function is to take all the data from the web service that we are returning and then put it into the table in SQLite using core data so that it is available inside SQLite database which can be managed by core data and we don't really have to be connected to the internet to access this information. So how do we do this? Well, there are a number of ways of doing this. The first thing we need to do is what about if we have already downloaded the data and there's a new version of data available? Maybe somebody added a couple of different vegetables. Instead of checking and comparing what has changed and what has not changed, we are simply going to create a function called remove all data. And we will use that function to simply remove all the data from our SQLite database. Now, one thing that you might be looking at is that I'm implementing remove all data inside import data function. You can create this as a private function also, but since remove all data is only used inside import data, I'm going to implement a function inside a function. This obviously can be done by creating a private remove all data function outside of import data. But whenever you have a function, like a private function outside import data on its own, then you always have the thinking that where else have you used remove all data? Well, remove all data is not going to be used anywhere else. It's just going to be used inside import data. In order to remove all the different vegetables that are in our SQLite database, we will create a fetch request for the entity named vegetable. That's actually the only entity we have. After this, we're going to go ahead and create a delete request. This is going to be a NS batch delete request. And we can go ahead and say fetch request, which is going to be a request. Next, we can go ahead and try to execute it. You can say view context dot execute the particular request, which is a delete request. And if it actually throws an error, then we can simply go ahead and log the error. So this means that every time our application start, it's going to get the data from the server, and then it's going to remove all the data and then insert new data. Ideally, or in a good scenario, in an ideal scenario, your web service 
should have a prerequisite, like a pre-flight service that is going to send a category or a current version of this data. And if the current version has not really changed, then we don't really need to delete the data. Unfortunately, at this point, the web API does not really have that service. So that's why we have to deal with removing all the data and then adding the data again. Next up, we are going to go ahead and get all the different DTOs from the web service. This can be done by simply calling the web service, get all vegetables, and passing in get all vegetables function. Before we insert all the different vegetables, it will be a good idea to remove the existing data. So let's go ahead and say remove existing data and call our function remove all data. This is going to remove everything from our SQLite tables, which are stored using core data. Once the data have been removed, we can go ahead and insert the data. So let's go ahead and say insert vegetables in the database. We're going to go ahead and go through a vegetable DTO in vegetable DTOs. And we can perform this using the background context. Currently, you can see that we don't even have the background context. The only context we have is the view context. We can go ahead and create a new background context, just like we created the view context. This can be done by calling new background context. This means that this particular request for fetching or inserting into the core data is going to be performed in the background. Next, we can say background context.perform. And we can perform anything we want, what we want. We can go ahead and await for it. And now we can go ahead and create a particular vegetable. We actually do have an access to the context, so we're going to pass that. We're going to go ahead and create an ID which is based on the vegetable DTO. In the same way, we are going to go ahead and assign all the stuff from the DTO to the vegetable. There we go. So basically, all the DTO stuff is on the right hand side is being transferred to the core data model object vegetable and we have assigned all of these different things and finally we have to make sure to save it perfect so now we have created a function called import data which is going to first remove all the data and then it's going to perform the request get all the new data, which is the DTOs, and then use those DTOs to put it inside the SQLite using core data. But now the question is, well, where do we call this? We should call this inside our Green Garden app file. Inside over here, we can go ahead and create a import data function. Import data. This function can be an async function because we do have to await for it. Try await core data manager dot shared dot import data. If there's an error, we can go ahead and log the error. Perfect. But we still have to call this because or else it's not going to work. Let's go ahead and call this inside the init of the Green Garden app. Well, we can't really call the import data because it is marked with async. But we can use the task closure to call this function. So self, or we can say import data, and we can wait for it. Since we are inside the closure, we do have to use self. And now the self can be contained or captured in a concurrently executing code. So that's why we have to use make sure that it is not going to be captured. And there we go. 
So now if I go ahead and run the application, every single time I'm going to run the application, all the data is going to be downloaded from our web API service. And hopefully it's all inserted into the core data or into the SQLite using core data. The only way to check is to actually go to the table and see if our table is now populated with the vegetables or not. Over here, you can see that I am already inside the application support folder. If you want the URL for that, if you scroll up completely, you can see the URL is right there. This is actually pointing to documents, but from there, if you go back one level, you can reach application support. You can see that in the application support folder, we have file called greengardenmodel.sqlite. Let's go ahead and use the SQLite tool to use this file and jump into the SQLite 3 terminal, greengardenmodel.sqlite. If I say table over here, you can see that these are the tables that Core Data has created. One of the tables that interests us is the first one, which is Z vegetable. They, these names are given by Core Data, so everything begins with Z. Let's go ahead and say select everything from Z vegetable. This is simple SQL that we are writing. And there we go. We got a lot of stuff in there. And all of this stuff is basically representing that we were able to download successfully all the different vegetables from an API, which is right here, and then put it into SQLite, which is managed by Core Data. So now everything is inside Core Data. The next step that we want to take is to start reading this information from Core Data instead of communicating with the API. We also need to tell our page that, hey, the download has been completed, so you can go ahead and refresh the screen and get the data from the actual SQLite table instead of making a request. If you go to our views right now, you can see the vegetable list screen is calling the vegetable list view model dot get all function. If you go to the vegetable list view model and check out the get all function, that calls the web service. So currently you can see that the vegetable list view model is relying on the web service and is going to make an API call to get all the different vegetables. We need to change that so that the vegetables and all the data now is always going to fetch from the SQLite, so there will be no network call. The only network call that we are going to make will be at the start of the application where we are importing the data. So in the next lecture, you are going to learn about how we can update our vegetable list view model so that it starts reading all the vegetables from the SQLite database instead of making a request to the web service. We will check it out in the next lecture. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my Udemy courses. I have a lot of iOS development courses, including Async Await and Actors Concurrency in Swift, which was just released a couple of weeks ago, and it is already the hot and new course on Udemy. If you want to learn MVVM design pattern, I have a course for you, MVVM design pattern using Swift and iOS, Mastering Rx Swift, Swift for intermediate developers, a lot of different courses if you want to get into iOS development or want to learn a particular thing about iOS development, I will have a course for you. So the best way to get these courses is to check out the YouTube description. You will find links for all the different courses that I have with the coupon codes or referral codes. 
and I really hope that you enjoy those courses. Thank you so much.